Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On today's episode of General Hospital, Carly and Nina argue once more. Diane confronts Holly, and Robert asks Anna for her opinion. Sasha picks up the sound of a baby weeping on the set of the home and heart in her earpiece. When she starts to cry, the producer tells his assistant to turn up the sound. Sasha isn't looking so good, as Haven observes. Haven asserts that her earphone is functioning normally whereas Sasha claims there is a problem with hers. Lucy and Brooke Lynn pick up on the problem right away. When Cody enters the stage, the producer tells the assistant to turn up the volume further. He removes his boots and shirt, starts to unbuckle his pants, and threatens to streak if the noise isn't stopped. He remarks that the FCC penalty are significant. The sound is trimmed by the producer. Flora tries to assist Sasha on stage by discussing the product, but Haven tells her to take it away because it's Sasha's show. Sasha apologizes to Haven and the viewers at home as the sound is restored, but she explains that her earpiece was creating a horrendous noise. Sasha demonstrates the deceptor's operation to the group after Flora inquires about it. After the show is complete, Sasha informs Haven that she will be hearing from her attorneys regarding that prank. Sasha approaches Brooklyn and Lucy, who give her a warm embrace and compliment on how fantastic she was. When they inquire as to what transpired, she explains that someone piped the sound of a baby sobbing into her headset. After hearing Sasha and the others discussing what transpired, Flora snaps at Haven. There was a mix-up, according to Haven, and she will catch the offender. Flora accuses her of being the offender, and she doesn't want to be the top seller on a show that works in this way. I quit, she exclaims. Sasha, in the meantime, informs Lucy and BLQ that she was on the verge of passing out before realizing the sound wasn't her imagination and that she had been duped. The assistant to the producer comes over and expresses regret for what transpired. There is just one more caller about the deceptor, according to her, and they want to speak with Sasha. Sasha tells the woman who overheard her tragedy that it is a wonder that she has survived. It is, according to Sasha, and she is glad to tell her that her company's new device is also. When Brooke Lynn spots Cody trying to slink away, she pursues him. She confronts him because she thinks he saw the tweets and is aware that he convinced the producer to turn off the sound effect. He is invited to join them in celebrating at the Savoy. He claims to have a thing, but only for Sasha's amusement. In the meantime, Lucy assures the producer that she will put things right. Robert questions Anna at her home whether she considered her family when she decided to be exposed to Victor's lethal virus. Anna warns him not to imply that she places anything above her family, but he has a history of sacrificing everything for the woman he loves. Anna inquires as to his situation. He acknowledges Holly wants to give it another shot, but there is another woman. Robert tells her about Holly and Diane and that he isn't sure what to do as they settle down and sip some Chianti. Anna must be truthful and advise Robert on what to do. He's definitely never been in this situation before. Anna remarks when she is unable to. She quips that it's funny because he's a catch. Robert decides to leave after feeling uneasy. He asks if he's gone when Valentin comes back. Anna claims she believed he would never depart. They resume their enjoyment of each other's presence. Alexis and Diane have a meeting at the Savoy. Diane grits her teeth as Holly enters and joins Felicia at a table across the room. Alexis observes and inquires as to what is happening. According to Diane, she gave Robert a choice regarding Holly and her. Felicia informs Holly that Mac was called away, and Holly says she is relieved to have a girls' night out. If she's remaining in Port Charles, Felicia queries. Holly adds it depends on if Diane is wanted when she stares at her. Holly provides an alternative solution to Felicia's suggestion that they move somewhere else. Holly inquires as they get close to Diane and Alexis about joining them. Alexis agrees, but Diane requests some private time with Holly first. 
Diane advises to Holly that they lay all their cards on the table while Alexis and Felicia proceed to the bar. Robert has been informed by Diane that she will not challenge another woman for his attention. Holly responds that it is reasonable and that she should be aware of her feelings for Robert. Diane queries whether she thinks Robert feels Robert the same way. way about her. Holly claims that he hasn't verified anything, but she still has faith in their shared past. Diane inquires of Holly as to what she believes will make this relationship succeed this time. She emphasizes that since they reside in two entirely different universes, perhaps the reason things haven't worked out for them all this time isn't that the universe keeps tearing them apart, but rather that they weren't intended to be together in the first place. Felicia and Alexis discuss Holly and Diane in the bar. Holly says she feels a little adrift and is looking for a new project, but Felicia appreciates that she is clear about what she wants. She respects Alexis for her relationship with the invader. Alexis acknowledges that the paper isn't what she expected it to be. She spends most of her time managing people and locating advisors rather than reporting on stories. She is sad that her paper-related dream didn't come true. Felicia is confident in her ability to make it happen. Felicia needs to drop by Maxie's apartment with soup because she understands how late it is. Alexis has given Felicia a lot to think about, and she thanks her for that. In response to Felicia leaving, Alexis adds, same here. Ms. Wu proposes that they relocate to a more private area and explains to Gladys that there may be another option to pay off her debt. Ms. Wu reminds Gladys that having money isn't everything and that she has assets, connections, business ties, and agreements as they move to the back area. Gladys is aware that she is talking about Sonny. Gladys claims that she is unfamiliar with Sonny's business and that he dislikes her a lot. That is unfortunate, Ms. Wu says, adding that she has until tomorrow at noon to make good on her debt. She admonishes Gladys that if she can't pay, maybe Sasha will since she is sick of Gladys abusing her kindness. Brooklyn, Lucy, and Sasha return to the pub to celebrate. They received five extra primetime slots, according to Lucy, after she put pressure on the producer. One requirement, according to her, was that Sasha serve as the Deceptor's spokeswoman. Sasha expresses gratitude to them both for their help. Sasha acknowledges that she is feeling more like herself than she has in a while, and that perhaps it is time for her to take the wheel once more. Gladys enters and overhears Sasha suggesting that the guardianship might need to be terminated. Meanwhile, Diane bids Holly farewell and gets back in touch with Alexis. Even though Diane acknowledges she kind of loves Holly, she informs her buddy that she made her points. Holly walks over to Ms. Wu, who is happy to see her again. Happy to be back, Holly. Given the success of their previous joint endeavor, Ms. Wu inquires as to her interest in conducting additional business. Robert walks in and sees them talking together. The producer informs Haven that the Deceptor is a major smash when they return to the station. Cody suddenly challenges Haven for deceiving Sasha. What does he want? asks Haven. Cody promises to make sure her sales numbers are the least of her worries if she ever attempts anything similar with Sasha again. If he's threatening her, she queries. Yes, ma'am, I am. And you don't want to see me follow through on my threats, he says. At Carly's request, Nina shows up. Nina acknowledges that they were interrupted in the hospital and thanks her for the invitation. Carly claims to be listening while Nina continues. Nina explains that she has been doing some introspection and acting out of fear, which has caused her to hurt others. Nina blamed Carly for the distance between them even though she is aware that she has injured Willow. She believes it was simpler to despise Carly than to take responsibility for the issues she caused. She apologies. Is that it? inquires Carly. Nina quips that she should have known better than to believe that Carly would accept her apology. If she were her, would she accept it? wonders Carly. Carly informs Nina that she just expresses her desires for Willow not for Willow herself. Even if she is not present, Nina wants her kid to live a long, healthy life. Carly admits, I almost believe that. If there is a way to mend their connection, Nina promises she will try. Carly explains to Nina that she doesn't grasp it 
and that the relationship cannot be fixed. Naaman is aware that she had burned the earth numerous times with Willow, and she is relieved that Carly was born because Willow needed a mother. Carly was Willow's mother, and Nina sobs that she is grateful for that. Carly offers to assist her with Willow, but only if Nina wants to date Carly. Carly points out that Willow won't fight for Nina if she doesn't want anything to do with her. As Nina quips, I should have known you weren't going to help. She feels that she never Carly ought to have inquires paid as to, to her. what Drew said. Nana replies that he instructed her to confess her errors to her. Nana claims to have anticipated Carly's lack of interest. Nyman is advised by Carly to practice patience and quit testing the limits that Willow has placed. Carly observes that Nina only considers her wants before Willow's. She's called a hypocrite by Nina. Carly suggests that she might be, but Nina is aware of her error, says Carly. If you want to be her mother, you must accept her conditions. Nina acknowledges that Carly didn't intentionally construct a chasm between her and Willow, but she made use of it when she saw it was there. It isn't denied by Carly. And to think I felt guilty, Nina exclaims. Guilty about what? inquires Carly. Because it is obvious that Carly wants to keep her and Willow away. Nan pretends that there is no animosity between them. It doesn't, according to Carly, make what she said any less true. As she leaves, Nina murmurs, good luck with the SEC. In the upcoming General Hospital, Spencer describes Trina as brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, Portia says to someone. Miss Wu offers to modify Curtis' DNA test to suit his preferences. When will Esn be able to live her life as she pleases? Laura wonders. If you want answers, Mac, you'll need to ask your brother, Diane informs him. Holly turns to someone and asks for assistance.